Hello friends, how are you doing today? How many inches of snow do you think we're gonna get? I hope about 20 inches. 20 inches? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan over here, he, he, he says he's wanting a whole bunch. Uh, uh. I don't know how much he's gonna snow, but what I do know is that Jesus loves you and he cares yeah. about you. Amen. And we just thought that we would we'd share a message today. Uh, it's really been on our heart here lately to strengthen the family. Because we all believe that Jesus is coming soon. And we want, to, we want to have strong families. We want to be ready for Jesus coming. Amen. And so uh, last week we talked to you about prayer, uh, which is a very fundamental, basic building block of, of having a relationship with the Lord. I think really that, um, that if I, as I think back on my own walk, I think it really began with prayer. I think it's when I started talking to God. And, uh, and, and once I started talking to God, what it did, it opened up a channel for him to work in my life. Amen. And so I believe that God wants to work in your life, friends, or you wouldn't even be on right now. When you when you are watching this, this really means that you're saying, Lord, I want to learn more about you. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's jump in and see what God has got for us today. Amen. Father in heaven, here we are, all of us, uh, all of us that are watching. We've got some listening, and uh, we're just pr praying that you would teach us. Teach us how to pray. Uh, teach us the importance of prayer. We want to, to learn what it means to have a relationship with you. So we pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cindy, you got a scripture that you want to share with us? I do. Okay. I, I'm going to start in First um, Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. So that's okay. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. It says, I exhort, therefore... That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. How many? All. All men. Okay. <laughs> That's everyone. Friends, there's power in intercessory prayer. Amen. Have you ever had one of those nights that you couldn't sleep? Yes. You know, you just, you know, life's not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you just tossed and turned because you kept me awake. <laughs> uh, we just Sorry. tossed and turned. You tossed and turned. You couldn't sleep. Uh, you you rode over on this side. You rode mm -hmm. over on that side. You just yep. couldn't sleep. Um, you look at the clock. It's around 2.30 in the morning. It was just like a, a deep, dark cloud uh, was, was over a, a, a lady named Colonel Gacy's wife. It's, uh is uh, Mistress Colonel Gacy, and she just she just had a dark cloud over her, and she couldn't sleep, and mm -hmm. she was having one of those sleepless nights, and and uh, uh, so she 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 felt the need to call on the Lord, so she rolled out of her bed, and she got on her knees, mm -hmm. and she began to pray, mm -hmm. and she prayed, and she prayed, and she got back up in bed, and uh, but still the dark cloud was still there, and so she did what we all need to do she rode back out of bed and she got on her knees and she prayed she couldn't understand why in the world that, that she would be uh, uh so uh what a dark cloud would be over her right now if anything she should be happy she should be excited uh, because her husband had been uh, been in europe for months now and he was on his way back uh, on his way back to see her she should be excited I mean, he was on his way at that moment. He was on his way. He had, he had boarded a, a cruise liner, a beautiful ship called the Titanic. And he was on his way home to see his baby. And so here she was, did not know it, but, the, mm -hmm. but as she was on her knees praying, the, her husband was on the ship, the Titanic, mm -hmm. and was in the middle of the North Atlantic and had hit an iceberg. And this iceberg had had, had 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 thrust into the hull of the of the ship, and the ship uh, had taken on water and it had leaned over heavily to one side. And uh, her husband, uh, Colonel Gacy, had been thrown from the boat into wow. the icy cold waters of the North Atlantic. Wow. And little did she know that as she was praying for her husband, as she was praying period, uh, asking for God's help and God's leading, that, that, a, that a lifeboat had, had come up beside her husband, wow. Colonel Gacy, and had thrown him a life preserver and saved Praise his God. life. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So, you know, blessed is the man that has a wife that's praying for him. And I know that. 
Uh, because I was one of those that had, was rescued by prayer also. My wife prayed for me, and I praise God for that. There is power, friends, in this intercessory prayer. So blessed is the man that has a, a wife that's praying for him. Blessed is the friend yep. uh, that has someone praying for him yep. or her. Absolutely. So. Um, I just think it's appropriate to talk about this. And most of you are going to know what I'm talking about. Have you ever just been maybe daydreaming or at, at your work and somebody's name comes on your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, just from nowhere and you haven't seen this person heard from, maybe you, maybe you have, but in, in my case, the story I'm going to share, I had not seen this particular friend in quite some time. And I was just driving down the road. Actually, I was headed home from work and ready to go home from work after a long day. And, um, for privacy, I'm not going to mention the name, mm -hmm. but, um, We'll just call her Susie. And so Susie's name just popped up in my mind, like strong. And I'm thinking, what do I do with that? Now, yeah. this is important to note. This was not long. Matter of fact, I, I can't remember the exact time frame, but it was very, very soon after we had both committed our lives to Christ and yeah. had... Uh, has, had celebrated our baptism yeah. and and we're really and, working for the Lord. And you had seen God work a miracle in my life. I had. Uh, I was I was mm -hmm. uh, out in the middle of the sea of sin, totally lost in sin, and God had put it on your heart to pray for me. Right. And and you had witnessed God work a miracle so in I my knew, life. So I knew I knew what prayer could do. Yes. But when when Susie's name come on my mind that day, it just really kind of confused me because. The last time I had seen Susie, uh, she was not doing well. And I'm just going to paint a really small picture because the what I want you to hear is really the power of prayer. And I want to encourage you that um, how powerful intercessory prayer is, especially that scripture. If you're just joining that from uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, you know, our prayers, our supplications are for yeah. everyone. And I believe when, when someone comes on our heart, it's a God thing. Yeah. It's one of those connections you yeah. know i believe that all true prayer comes from the heart of god yeah. and for some reason god has chosen uh intercessory prayer as a weapon to fight against this war this battle between good Absolutely. and evil he, he i don't know why and we'll ask god when we get to heaven about this but uh you know god just could come in and work a miracle like in suit in, in uh, susie's right. life right Absolutely. but but god has chosen us human beings to be part of this plan of salvation He's chosen us to be instruments, and, and He works through our prayers. So God does things on planet Earth through our prayers. God does something in individual lives through our prayers. It gives Him a channel to work in. Absolutely. And again, I'm going to be kind of brief, and I may seem vague in some details, but um, Susie was a girl who, by the world's standpoint, had it, had it all together. She was gorgeous. She was young, she was single, and came from a pretty affluent family. And um, unfortunately, Susie had made some pretty poor decisions and had went down a path that was not did not fare well with her. And mm -hmm. I'm, we'll just leave it at that. So much so, uh, she was a woman in her young 30s, very healthy. But because of some of the choices she had made, she had gotten herself in a very difficult health situation, so much that the last I had heard from Susie, that she was actually in a nursing home at wow. the young age of around 32. So when I'm driving home that day, mm -hmm. I thought, well, what do you want me to do with this, Lord? I mean, I don't even know where Susie is. Yeah. So I went to that, to that nursing home and I thought, this is crazy that I'm doing this, you know, but I was just, the, the impression was God super strong. I'd seen God work before in my life. I'd heard him speak strongly and profoundly before. And so I was being obedient to what I felt was to go find Susie. Yeah. So I go into the nursing home and would you believe that they just kind of looked at me and went, well, she, she left yesterday. And I went, she left. So what mm -hmm. do you mean left? And they're like, well, she just left and no details, no information. I thought, well, what do I do then? So I went to her parents' house mm -hmm. and knocked on the door, and they just stared at me like, we don't really have time for you right now. And I thought, 
okay, this God strongly put this person on my heart, mm -hmm. and why am I hitting these dead ends, okay? Yeah. So I kind of gave up. I, they, they did give me a phone number. I had a small lead, I thought, to connect with her because now I couldn't stop because I'm like, I've got to find her. And so I, I called her and there was never an answer. And matter of fact, one time she did come to the phone and she sounded really, really bad. And she mm -hmm. just hung up. It's like she didn't even know who I was. Yeah. So fast forward to a, a time my, my dad was in the hospital. He had to go have a, um, a and he had a brain aneurysm and they were going to have to put a stent in. And I had still been praying for Susie mm -hmm. on my heart. Couldn't find her nowhere. But I, I, I had heard that she lived in the same town where my dad was having this procedure. And long story short, my dad was taken into the operating room only to find out they did not have the correct stint for him. So they woke him back up and said, we're going to put you in another area of the hospital for um, a little observation. Well, so everything had changed that day. We left and moved our cars and I was walking into the other part of the hospital where I should not have been. And you know where the story is going. And the main hospital doors open and I walked through and it's like everything started slow motion. And there was Susie. Wow. God was at work the whole time. Looking like she had lost her best friend. She was thin. It did not look good mm -hmm. at all. When she saw me, she came and, and just threw her, herself on me, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And we hugged and embraced. And I did not know what all this was about. But I did mm -hmm. know this, that there was a reason yeah. why God had put her on my heart. And we were there you know, yeah. together. She was starving. She told me she didn't have any food at her home. I drove her to her home and verified that as I opened a, her refrigerator, mm -hmm. there was like a little dry piece of meat or something. That's yeah. it. Nothing yeah. else. Nothing in her covers. Yeah. So time uh, would have it that I would invest my life into Susie again, mm -hmm. begin, uh, or did, went and bought her some groceries and all that. Um, I'm, I'm going to fast track a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. She began going to church with us. Mm -hmm. There were times that I would look out or sit, you know, I would be up front for a little bit and look out and she would be dozing off to sleep, but she was there with right. us. And, and we were just, she was back in my life and I, I couldn't really understand why all this was happening. Why God did that? No. And mm -hmm. she began learn, learning a lot about Jesus and she began doing Bible studies and things were amazing. Well, I will tell you the day that I took her grocery shopping and we walked in, she was breathing so hard and so heavy. Mm -hmm. She was gasping for breath. You see... Susie had been doing so many drugs that had never been a part of her life before, mm -hmm. and her heart valve was needing replaced, yeah. and she was needing surgery. Yeah, for her heart valve. Yeah. So the night before her surgery, we talked on the phone. We lived a good hour from each other, and I worked the next day. But that night, we were on the phone together, and she asked this question probably the most important question she's ever asked in her entire life. Yeah. And she says, how can I be for sure that I can have eternal life? And I was like, oh, that's heavy. <laughs> but thank the Lord, I was able to share with her some scriptures. I was able to pray with her. And I, and I asked her, I said, Susie, is, is, is Jesus your best friend? And she said, yes. I said, you know, do you love him with all of your heart? And she said yes. And there were a lot of other things that we talked about. And we had a really good visit. And Susie went in for her surgery the next day to get her heart valve replaced. And unfortunately, she did not survive. She did mm -hmm. not make it off the operating room table. And I was devastated. Mm -hmm. Devastated, but... I was rejoicing yeah. that God had put her on my heart so heavy that day to the point yeah. where I could share. 
you know, Cindy, and you, pray for her. You, you recognize God's voice because you were tuned into Him. If you had been caught up in the world just doing your own thing uh, and not realize that God wanted to use you mm -hmm. in the, uh, to, to reach out and save uh, Susie, then they're, they're, He wouldn't have been able to reach you. But because you realized that, that, that God needed you to, yeah. because the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Yeah. And he says, we need to pray to the Lord of the harvest. It would send out labors. That's, that's Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Um, you recognize God's voice and you used him. And you introduced what you did is you gave Susie a correct picture of who Jesus is. I, I sure did my very best. Yeah. There's a world of people out there that are just lost mm -hmm. like Susie, that are lost in sin, caught up. And, and God wants someone. He needs someone. That, that will be his go-between, his mm -hmm. intercessor, someone to stand in the gap right. and, and to meet these people and to show them Jesus. You, you had some good news for her in 1 John right. chapter 5, verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. You introduced Susie to Jesus. When, when, she, right. when she closed her eyes with the anesthesia, but having her... And she was holding on to Jesus' hand. Absolutely. He that has the Son has life. And he that has not got the Son has not life. She had Jesus. She mm -hmm. asked. He is not going to turn away from anyone that asks. Yeah. These things I have written to you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, you can have confidence, that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a, that's a powerful scripture. Well, you know... It was exciting to lead Susie to Jesus. It was sad to see her yeah. leave at such a young age. But there's actually even some more exciting news that was, it almost didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of tenacity. And so I was really trying to figure things out. Well, you know, Susie's parents honestly had, had they were disappointed with her. Sure. She had let them down. They had helped her time and time and time again when she had went off this wrong path. Um, not all the result of her own choices. There were other influences that, that resulted in that. But they they were kind of wanting to wash their hands. They were embarrassed. Of her. They were embarrassed. And so much that I I couldn't even hardly find out where the um funeral. the funeral. And matter of fact, there was no funeral. There was only a graveside. Would you know that at the eleventh hour, I was at, able to find out where that graveside was going to be held, and it turned out it was only about thirty minutes from where I was working, which was a miracle. I left work, went to that graveside, and I was able to share with her parents and her brothers and the other family and friends gathered there. I said, "Do you know what happened the night before?" Susie went into surgery. They could not believe what, they did not even know that she had been drawing close to Jesus over those last several months of yeah. her, her life. It brought such joy to them and such peace in their hearts that they were able to say goodbye to their daughter with hope that they would be with her again yeah. one day. And that was a great joy. So I just want to encourage you, um, it may not be that detailed of a situation. Yeah. It could simply be that somebody just needs a phone call from you. That's right. Or a card from you or a text message that says, hey, how are you doing? You know, everything okay? Would you, would you like to go to lunch or something? Because when, when God puts someone on your heart, I believe there's a reason for it. And we need yeah. to act on it. If nothing else, pray for them. You may not ever get to connect with them. Mm -hmm. I believe that was just something God allowed for me, for confirmation that he was really working and doing something huge. And so I say the main thing is that we learn to pray effectively for others, um, just lifting them up before before right. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Give God a chance. He wants to use you to reach someone else. Amen. So powerful story of intercessory prayer. There is power in intercessory prayer for you. God can work miracles if he just has someone that's willing to be used, someone that that's a vessel that he can use, that he can, can work through. So I thank God personally myself. Yes, and I want to add to that too. It's a wonderful tool and modeling for us that if you have small children at home mm -hmm. to watch 
you know, parents praying for others like that, and they will want to do the same thing for their friends. And so it's a powerful tool that we can um, illustrate mm -hmm. to our children. So it's a wonderful thing to have a wife that's praying for you. I it's a wonderful it. thing to have a friend that's praying for you. But do you know what the most wonderful thing in the whole wide world is? Mm. To know that Jesus is praying Amen. for you. Do you realize right now that you are on Jesus' heart? Right now, you are on Jesus' mind. Right now, he's thinking of you. Your name is on his lips. What troubles you troubles him. Friends, if you've got something going on in your life that's stealing your joy, it bothers God because he cares about you. We have no idea how much God loves us. He cares about us Amen. so much. And he, he loves us so much. I want, I want you to turn in your Bible to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I want to paint a picture here to you just uh, uh, on the love that God has for you and, and how important intercessory prayer is. John chapter 17 is, uh, is the intercessory prayer chapter of Jesus Christ. Now think about this. And I'm going to get you to read uh, John chapter 17 verse 1. But I want to kind of paint... I want to paint a picture. Give us a backdrop of what's going on here. As we get to John chapter 17 here, we, we see that Jesus is about ready. He's about ready to go to the cross. These are the very final hours before Jesus goes to the cross. But right before he does, now think about this. The, this is right before he goes, goes to the cross. I mean, what, how does Jesus prepare for the cross? How does he prepare for, for everything that he's about to face? He goes to God in prayer. And what's he praying for? And that's what I want to bring up here. And that's what's Jesus praying for is he prepares for the cross. Do you know everything involved in the cross? I mean, this is, he's on his way. Judas is about to betray him. I mean, I'm going to paint the picture here. Mm -hmm. Peter is about to deny him, one of his very own. His disciples are just going to forsake him. Uh, and and and, uh, and the Jews, the ones that he came to save, they're just going to be shouting curses at him mm -hmm. and, and everything. So uh, read John chapter 17, verses 1 through 3. John okay. chapter 17, verse 1 through 3. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus wow. Christ whom thou hast sent. Now wrap your mind around this, friends. Mm -hmm. what, what hour is he talking about here? What hour is this? This is the hour that the nails were going to be driven into his hands and feet. This is the hour that the crown of thorns are going to be, is going to be shoved into, into, into his head. This is the hour that the blood it, from the thorns is, is going to rush, you know, just flow down by his head here. This is the hour that he was going to get on the cross and bear my sins and your sins by himself on, on that cross right there, on that cruel Roman cross. You know, and this is what really gets me, Cindy, more than anything else, is that in that hour that he was about to face all that, yeah. he, he wasn't thinking about no. the fact that he was going to be enduring all that pain right. and all that suffering. He, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't thinking he about any of that. Yeah, he wasn't thinking. What, what was on his mind mm. uh, and what was on his heart, the way he was preparing, the most important thing to him facing that hour was me and you. That's right. It's me and you, friends. Jesus was thinking about you on that hour. When he you know? was on the cross, we were on his on mind. On his mind, absolutely. You know, that, that we that, that that we would what he was thinking about is that that, that we would grab hold of the life preserver. That's that right. we would grab. You know, he's given us all a life preserver. Jesus Christ took our sins. He he paid the price for my sin and your sin. Amen. He did that. All the guilt, all the shame, everything. Everything he carried to the cross. Everything has been laid out there. Our salvation has been made laid out there for all of us. All we got to do is grab the life preserver. Amen. But what was on his mind, he was praying for us that we would. Yes. That, that we would do that. That we'd finally realize how much he loves us and how much he cares about us. That night, that night, Jesus was praying for you. And, uh, you know, uh, John chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus wasn't only praying for his disciples, 
But that night, Jesus was praying for you. Will you read John chapter 17 in verse uh, 20 and 21? Okay. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast Wow, isn't that amazing? That was what was on Jesus' heart that night, right before the cross, right before the beating, right before the will, everything that Jesus was about to endure, Jesus was interceding for you. Mm -hmm. You know, he, you were on his heart. You were on, on his, his mind. So what was Jesus request from his father what was his request what did he want more than anything else what was his desire what what was he doing this all for uh read verse 24 right. john chapter 17 verse 24 father i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation. I love that. Oh, I love God. that. Do you hear that? What was his desire? The King James says, Father, I desire that they may also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. His desire, his, his desire, his, what he wanted more than anything, the reason Jesus endured the cross of Calvary is so that you could spend eternity with him. Mm -hmm. So you, no matter what you've done, no matter what your past is, that you could be a part of that. You know, that's the reason God put Susie on your heart. He, 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 no matter what happened to Susie, no matter how far she had slipped away, he right. wanted to save her. Absolutely. And he sent you to do it. That's, that's the, the, the length and the width of God's love for each one of us. I love that picture that we paint there. So Jesus had one desire that we could all be saved. Mm -hmm. Friends, I want you to know something. The power of intercessory prayer is powerful. But the most powerful thing in the world to know is that Jesus is praying for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jesus was interceding for you in the garden that night. You, you were on his heart. When he hung on that cross, when, when Jesus hung on that cross, friends, he was interceding for you. He was praying for you. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That was for me and you. That was for all of us. All of us that have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Jesus, and, and right now, this same Jesus that died for you on the cross of Calvary is interceding on your behalf right now. Yeah. In fact, the Bible says so in John, in not John, but, but in Hebrews chapter 7, in verse 25, it says, Wherefore he's able to save to the uttermost Amen. for those that come to him in prayer, seeing that he forever lives to intercede. Amen. So no matter what your past is, I mean, uh, Susie had made a mess out of her life. Her yeah. family had thought she's too far gone. They her she's off. unreachable. Yeah. She's she, nobody can help her. No. We just write her off. Yeah. But but Jesus had not wrote her off. Praise God. He had not wrote her off, and that that's the that's the love of God right there. Yes, and I just have to say too that it has been from that day on my practice to say, Lord, show me somebody you need me to, to share your love with and yeah. he always does it may like i said not be that significant or that type of a detailed story but he always reveals somebody when yeah. you ask he will show you that person friends you might be thinking right now uh you might be looking at yourself saying you know i don't know how in the world that i could be saved because mm -hmm. i know myself i look in the mirror you might have a family member uh that you're thinking well they're not ever going to change they just they, they, they don't want anything to do with God. There's no hope at all. I just I don't see absolutely absolutely no way they could they could be saved. Mm -hmm. But friends, when you look when you look to Jesus, mm -hmm. when you look at the you when you look at what God went through to save each and every one of us, yeah. when you look to the extent to the length that God went to, and you, you see what God was willing to do to save anyone and everyone, the the, the Susies and the, and the Ricks. What he was willing to do, there's absolutely no way you can be lost. Amen. If you look to Jesus, there, there's that much power. He can save to the uttermost, friends. The uttermost means anything. Uttermost, guttermost. Whatever you've done, he can He can take your scars and he can turn them into stars. Amen. He can take your mess and he can turn it into a message. 
I, I love sharing, saying that because that's what he's done in my life, friends. That's the reason I'm here right now. I am a product of intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. God can, can, can take our mess that we make and he can turn it into a message. Amen. He can do that. Amen. Friends, so no matter where you're at right now, you can make it. You can make it, brother. You can make it, sister. I, you, your child is not unsavable. Get a scripture. This Bible right here is full of promises. Amen. What you need to do, there is power in these promises in this Bible right here. You find you a scripture that, that, that you hear God speak in your heart, mm -hmm. and you put your finger on it, and you say, there it is right here, Lord. I'm claiming this scripture right here for my son or my mm -hmm. daughter. Have you got a child uh, that, that, is, uh, that just seems to be straight away and there's no hope for them? i got a scripture I want to share with you right now. I'm looking it up. Isaiah 49, verse 25. You got a child that the enemy seems like that that uh, that has got a grip, and they have no interest in God, and they just seem to get, be getting further and further away from the Lord. Here's a scripture right here, Isaiah forty nine verse twenty five. The intercessory prayer is powerful, but when you combine intercessory prayer with mm -hmm. the Word of God, you got dynamite. Amen. That's right, dynamite. Uh, but thus saith the Lord. Now. Jesus, how did how did Jesus overcome every temptation that the devil threw out at him in the desert? It, it is, is written. written. He gave him a thus saith the Lord. Here's you a thus saith the Lord. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Mm -hmm. Friends, it's possible right now that your loved one, your friend, your neighbor, whoever God's laying on your heart right now, uh, maybe maybe the enemy has them captive right now, just just like Susie was. Yes. Uh, but. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. For I for I will contend with him who who will contend with you, and I will save your children. Amen. Friends, that's a powerful promise from God. You can Amen. count on God, friends. He loves you and he cares about you. And um, I'm thinking right now, he's probably putting somebody on your heart. There's probably somebody uh, that, that you have maybe already given up on. That you just think, well, there's no hope for them. They're not ever going to change. Friends, maybe right now God is laying that person on your heart. Mm -hmm. And I want to challenge you to believe that God believes that he can save that person. That he can work a miracle uh, in their life. And he, maybe he needs you to do it, to be a part of it. It's hard to imagine, but he loves that person even more than you do, which is so hard to wrap yes. your mind around. Mm -hmm. But that is our God, L-O-V-E, love. That's right. Mm -hmm. Friends, uh, why don't you give God a chance this week? I, I want to challenge you to do something. I want you to challenge. I want to challenge you uh, to to ask God to put some names on your heart that you can start praying for, that you can yeah. intercede for. I remember one time that uh, when I first got to a new church district, I, I invited the church, encouraged the church. I said, "Give me some names to pray for," and uh, I put those names. It's like probably ten of them. I put them on my refrigerator door mm -hmm. and and uh and I, what i did is i prayed for those names that my new church family had given me every day i prayed for those names and i got a telephone call just a little bit over a week probably yeah, wasn't and long. one and one of the names i was praying for was on the other line that telephone call yeah. didn't know the lady but her she had had a, a tragedy in her yeah. family her her sister's son had been killed in a, in a her sister's grandson yeah, he was had like been yeah, a real old. young man. His name was Little Bear. And maybe there might be some people from Woodward listening right now. I know we have a lot of, of good friends that are watching a lot on our on our on our Facebook Live church family. And uh, Little Bear was killed in a car accident. And they asked me to come over as a pastor and visit with the family. And I did. And I just fell in love with these families. It was the, the Bear family. Wonderful people. Still good friends of mine. I love them. Mm -hmm. And and uh, had a, had an opportunity to love the family through that, and we we uh, we had a church service and a, a funeral for little bear, and over a period of time, I, I I ended up doing several funerals, but several baptisms, and several people gave their life to the Lord, and they still are part of this church Amen. family right now. So I'm telling you, intercessory prayer works, friends. Powerful. Give God a chance, okay? All right. So Cindy, can you think of anything else you want to share? No, I think that's everything. Um, just, again, just don't ever think that anyone has gone too far beyond God's grasp and, yes. and reach. Because, like I said, He loves them more than you do. So, start praying for them when you put someone in your heart. Okay. 
So God wants to work a miracle in someone's life and he wants to use you to do it. Are you willing to stand in the gap? Yeah. Are you willing to be an intercessory prayer warrior mm -hmm. uh, for God? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we thank you uh, for our time in prayer with you. We realize, Lord, as we pray, that it gives you an opportunity to work, that a channel is opened up. I pray for all my brothers and sisters that's watching right now or that will watch in the future. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you would put somebody on their heart that you want to work a miracle through. Lord, and I pray, dear God, for miracles to take place. And just because, Lord, that they took this challenge and dared to pray to you, uh, that, that, that scripture promise in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, where the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few, and they pray to you to send them out in the harvest, I pray that there will be people in heaven because of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear God, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Jesus loves you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining. All right, I got to say it. The best is yet to come because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Bye-bye.